Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. This news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, tea sippers. I hope you guys are doing good today. Happy Friday. I cannot believe how fast this week has gone by already. It is insane that it's already Friday. But um, I hope you guys are doing good. So I dropped my deep dive on Wednesday. So I hope everybody is getting a chance to watch it and enjoying it. So today I want to talk about all this drama that's going on with Chris Brown, Chloe Bailey, and Keely Williams. So what happened is that basically the day before yesterday... Chloe came out and she basically announced to the world that she was doing a collaboration with Chris Brown. And so she had dropped a picture of her and Chris Brown and she titled it Second Piece, How Does It Feel at Chris Brown 224? Because that's when it's going to drop. And then they also dropped a snippet on YouTube. And when I tell you, she was giving vocals. I was definitely here for it. I wanted it to be longer. I wanted to hear more. And so, you know, I didn't really think too much of it. I thought it was an interesting collab. I saw her posted and went on about my business. Well, then I went on Twitter. <laughs> and Twitter was basically dragging Chloe, dragging Chris Brown. They are definitely not here for this collaboration. People are in their feelings. These are just some of the comments that were viral on Twitter underneath her post. So one person wrote this. They said, at Chloe, was Giveon not available? Anderson Pack, Khaled, Bruno Mars, Daniel Caesar, or literally anyone else? Somebody else says, Chris Brown called asking for a B collab, and Parkwood gave him Chloe's number instead. Another person says, Holly in a Twitter beef with Ruby Rose, and now Chloe is doing a song with Chris Brown. I'm tired of fighting this fight. Another person says, Chloe making songs with Chris Brown in 2023 like she's afraid of success. Someone else says it's literally Black History Month and Chloe's working with Chris Abuser Brown. Somebody else says if Beyonce don't come and knock some sense into Holly and Chloe crying face emoji. So a lot of people had a lot of things to say about this and a lot of folks were not feeling it at all. They definitely felt the way they felt like one, Chloe doesn't need a collaborative person. She just needs to get out there and, you know, use her vocals and write her music and do what she's been doing. But one particular person definitely was pissed off about this collaboration. I'm not sure who asked her, but she decided to, you know what I'm saying, chime in. I guess she's doing commentary now as well. I don't know. So Keely Williams, you know Keely, Miss Broken Promises, Promises. Um, she's out here giving her opinion on the situation that no one asked for. Um, this is the same woman who was bragging about getting a train ran on her by members of B2K. We also didn't ask for that information either. And notice that none of the men from B2K are claiming her. None of them have claimed this whole train story that she came up with because I guess nobody wants to claim that they hit that, but I digress. So this is what Keely says. She says, let him come out with his own record. So genius, so captivating that it makes us all forget that he beats women. He can't, so he won't. So what does he do? He slowly creeps back into the mainstream by getting small nods for features on black women's merit. Black women who are more talented, more worthy, but give him the okay. I'm swatting the fucking air right now. Throwing up emoji, throwing up emoji, throwing up emoji. Okay, so that's what she had to say. I mean, to me, honey, like, tell us why you're really mad. Keely with the 15 Y's after her name. Why are you so angry? You've been angry for a while now. Seems like all your other counterparts, Adrian Bailon and, you know, Notorious, they're doing good. They're not on social media ranting and raving and talking about trains being ran on them. Keely? Kylie? I can never pronounce it. We can we can never get it. Yeah, she said uh, that she she had an entanglement with three of the members. God she bless her. The TLW had an entanglement with three of the oh, members. Oh, no, 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 yeah. no, no. No, God bless her. Um, yeah, I haven't squashed and spoke at no, all. No, I, I don't talk to her at all. Man, why are you so pissed about this situation that has nothing to do with you? It sounds like you want to collab with either Chloe or Chris. It sounds like you want to get back in the music game, and because nobody's checking for you, here you come again stirring up shit. 
So she went viral for that. Of course, you know, you have a segment of the, you know, population who agree with Keely. And then you had other people who were just like, would she just go away? Like, this is not 2003. Like, why are you here? Once again, you know, just disrupting the energy of the Internet. So Chris Brown has finally responded back to her. And uh, Chris wasn't here for her thoughts at all. So Chris Brown, if you guys don't know, he's currently overseas. He's on tour. He took time out his busy day to basically respond to Keely. And this is what Chris Brown had to say. Chris Brown says, I'm getting kind of tired of your book of publicity, publicity. <laughs> That's never going to get old to me. I'm sorry. That video and song has been living rent free my head since early 2002, honey. So he says this. Obviously, you're at a point in your life where either you are very broke or broken. The fact that you think you have to speak negatively about me makes you look so lame. Your life and career must suck right now. Minding your business would have been the best, but I guess you don't have a business or a real job that makes you financially stable. I feel more embarrassed for you. You lack actual, I think he wrote, you lack actual maturity, but you can't really read it. But he says, I feel more embarrassed for you. You lack actual maturity. Then he goes on to post an old picture of her, and he writes, "Stop it, okay? Basically calling her a low-key thought and tell you know, it's a cross between the words stop, stop thoughting, stop being a thought, stop it. <laughs> Chris Brown is stupid for that, okay? So before I get into my commentary, this is a sponsored video by BetterHelp. So check out this quick ad, and I will come back with the rest of my commentary on this fuckery of a situation. Hey, you guys, I hope you guys are doing good today. Today's show sponsor is BetterHelp. And as you guys know, a lot of people are going through it. People are really stressed out. We have the cost of living going up. And a lot of people do not know what their future may look like in 2023. Did you know that a licensed therapist can help you become a better problem solver? Making it easier to accomplish your goals, no matter how big or small. Talking out your issues, problems, and fears with a licensed therapist can help you become less stressed and more confident in accomplishing your goals. So if you're thinking about trying out therapy, BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, it's accessible, and it's all online. All you have to do is go onto their website and fill out a short survey, and they'll match with one of their hundreds of licensed therapists. And also, don't forget that if you're not clicking with that therapist, you can switch therapists at any time. So you're never going to be stuck with one particular therapist. So if you want to be a better problem solver and get your goals accomplished, Therapy can definitely get you there. So make sure you guys go on to betterhelp.com slash sip slow to get 10% off of your first month. So once again, go on to the website betterhelp.com slash sip slow to save 10% off your first month. So make sure you guys check them out. All right. Welcome back. Thank you all for listening to the ad. So now the drama with Chris Brown has gotten even crazier, honey. Chris Brown has officially snapped. OK, so first he went to the post. I don't know if this was on the shade room or Hollywood Unlocked shot. I can't keep up. But he went to the post that Keely had posted her initial statement on one of the blogs. And so Chris was there and he put tomato, tomato, tomato in the comment section and then he wrote whack as fuck. And then he called her Miss Amtrak. Cheep, cheep. Okay. So Chris was being hella messy, but he was not done. After that, he took to his Instagram stories once again. And Chris went off. He is really pissed off. So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys what he says. He says, if all y'all still hate me for a mistake I made as a 17-year-old, please kiss my whole entire ass. I'm fucking 33, and I'm so tired of y'all running with this narrative. You word-ass niggas are the same ones that tune in every week to see Blueface and Krishan beat the fuck out of each other in front of the world. But that's okay. It's entertainment. All y'all can suck my dick disrespectfully. Then he says, where are all the cancel cultures with these white artists that date underage women, beat the fuck out of their wives, give them bitches AIDS? Oh, yeah, that's right. They're your buddies. No more fake love from me. Stay out of my way or get ran over. Simple as that. None of you, and I mean none of you niggas, can fuck with me. So Chris wanted all the smoke. He's tired of folks fucking with him, bringing up his past. He then went on to post the pictures of said white people, honey. Chris wanted all the smoke. He got Sean Penn over here. It said Sean Penn was arrested for the domestic of his then wife, Madonna. Sean Penn served 33 days in prison for the incident in which he punched a photographer. 
Then he goes on, he posts his Charlie Sheen child. In 2009, the two and a half men star Charlie Sheen was arrested on domestic violence charges after reporting trying to choke his wife, Brooke Mueller. Sheen also pled no contest to a 1996 charge where he attacked his girlfriend at his home. And let's also not forget, Sheen was out here giving people that package, honey. He was out here handing out HIV like it was Tic Tacs, bitch. Um, but we're not even going to go there. Then he goes on to post Emma Roberts. I forgot all about batshit crazy Emma Roberts, honey. So Chris posted this. Emma Roberts was arrested for domestic violence for beating up her boyfriend, Evan Peters, in Canada. The couple both starred in American horror story, The Coven. Y'all know Evan Peters, honey. He also played Jeffrey Dahmer. That's who she was beating up on. But that was before, you know, he played Dahmer. I wouldn't put hands on him now because he might fuck around and eat you. But anyways, then he goes on to post Nicolas Cage. In 2011, Nicolas Cage was arrested for domestic violence and, and disturbing the peace. Cage reportedly pushed outside of a tattoo shop and punched some cars. Most of his stuff is cut off. But as you can see, Chris Brown is tired. He said, y'all not going to keep coming at him when all these other people have had issues too, but y'all don't keep throwing it in their face. Y'all allow them to grow. Y'all allow them to act. Y'all allow them to make music. Y'all allow them to move on with their lives, but y'all keep holding this over his head. Well, I get what he's saying, but... You know, Blueface wasn't really feeling it for the most part. So Blueface came out. He had something to say. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys this Blueface clip right now. Check this out. Chris Breezy. Oh, yeah. Beat the Yaki. What's happening? Cause look, check it out. I understand the frustration, fool. You know, for me being in the situation. I'm not even going to trip on you because the message you're trying to send is way off. I get it. You know, bitch hit me. It's funny, I hit her back, it's fuck blue face, so I totally get it, that, that would be the most irritating thing ever. But, you gotta play the cards that you was dealt. <clears throat> you want some, but they did it too, why aren't you guys telling them anything type shit? And it's like, bro, life don't work like that, man. You know, if we all go do a crime together, we not all gonna get the same time together, you hear me? You might get the most amount of time, we might not all say nothing. But we all went and did the crime, so we got to take the time. You hear me? You want some? You guys are going to give me the most time, but they did it too. Like, judge, sentence them. Yeah, like, we ain't got nothing to do with that, bro. You know what I mean? Like, handle your candle, deal with your situation, how you deal with it. Only thing I disagree with is you yes, posting all these random white people and, and me and the bitch and trying to, like, distract from your thing you feel me like you gotta stand on it care like if you beat the bitch up shit you beat the bitch up like <laughs> you don't got it. like you scared right, to like <laughs> yeah like i get it you want some r&b you don't want to be seen as r&b but i don't got it. you beat the yaki you gotta hey i beat my bitch up man i, I ain't finna come on here and be like well chris brown did it 16 years ago and and you guys let him Still, like, perform at the BET Awards, and uh, I'm going to sound like a, like a square, guy. Okay? That's what I'm going to sound like. And my last opinion is, girl, you beat up the wrong bitch. Yeah. You got, <laughs> you, you got a bad judge. Like, you feel me? We didn't all get the same judge, okay? Yeah, I got a bitch, you feel me? She going to fight back, so I'm going to get less time. You hear me? You beat, you beat up a... <laughs> yeah, you beat up the wrong bitch. You beat up the bitch that just performed at the Super Bowl. And then like, yeah, like... Sorry. All right, child. Y'all just heard what Blueface had to say. Blueface is such a fucking mess. You beat up the wrong bitch, bro. Now, how about we don't beat up any bitch? How about we keep our hands to ourselves? And I think the most disturbing part of that, like, I get Blueface coming out and defending himself because it's like, yo, you're into this drama with Keely and, you know, uh, Chloe in the in the song, the internet is dragging you. Don't drag me and Krishan into this shit. So I get what he's saying, but the way he said it, like, come on, Blueface. You beat up the wrong bitch. You done beat up the bitch that performed at the Super Bowl. You know, you got to beat up an old raggly bitch that nobody give a fuck about from Baltimore. That's basically what he's trying to say in so many words. But what's even more disturbing is you hear Krishan in the background giggling, laughing. Yeah, uh-huh, yep, because it's so funny that he put hands on you because you fought him back. Child, their relationship is so toxic. I don't know what to do. Um, it's not neither one of them are my children, so I'm not gonna stress over it. You know what I'm saying? Blueface is not mine, but he does have a mother. 
And his mother also decided, strangely enough, to involve herself in this situation. I guess she's also doing commentary. Um, I think Blueface is a grown man. I believe he's, I don't know, at least 25 and up. Um, but here comes the mother with her cape to speak up for her son, who has already spoken up for himself. So Mama Blueface wrote, they done drove at Chris Brown official to snitching laughing face emoji. But now we're going to listen to what Mama Blueface has to say. Go ahead and check this out. Now y'all know we done been through a lot. Chris Brown should have kept it to them white folks. Okay, you done threw the color folks under the bus, boy. What you doing over there, huh? Do you need the mama to talk to you? You don't throw us under the bus. You throw them other folk under the bus. You was doing good when you had them other folk under the bus. Now go ahead and rewrite that shit. Come on now. I know your mama told you you don't be putting us under that bus. And another thing, Chris Brown. Blueface used to pretend to be you as a child. Okay, he was Chris Brown all the way up until he became Blueface. So technically, you set a poor example for my son is what you did. Because maybe he just might be following behind you. Okay. Child, all right. Y'all just heard Blueface's mama saying a whole lot of nonsense. I'm confused as to how she can now feel like she can blame Chris Brown for her grown son's antics. Even if he followed Chris Brown and was a fan of Chris Brown, that doesn't excuse the fact that he thinks it's okay to put hands on Krishan, nor does it excuse the fact that Krishan puts hands on him. Your son is responsible for his own actions, just like Chris Brown is responsible for his actions. Mama Blueface, child, get a life, okay? Now, after that went viral, um... Blueface also wrote this. He said the truth could never be a diss. I fuck with at Chris Brown official. Met cuz he's just as player as me. It's all love. But I got hit with a stray this morning. Chris Brown wrote, yeah, I. He also made another response to Keely and he wrote this. Oh, but Keely hates domestic violence, huh? This be all for y'all. Fake ass advocate shit. And basically posted a screenshot of Keely she wrote this in January. She says, doing an exploratory dive into Blueface and Krishan because I need to see some mess that's not mine. Clips and YouTube recommendations welcome. Meaning that she's willing to watch Krishan and Blueface put hands on each other. But this weird bitch wants to be super loud when it comes to the whole Chris Brown working with Chloe. That's why I said Keely's not genuine. She's in it. She's just trying to, you know, jump on the train and, you know, speak on some shit that she really doesn't believe in. And another thing that's really problematic with Keely that I've never liked is that from day one, like I've said in all my old videos concerning 3LW, Notori Notton has stuck to the same story. Of Keely's ass putting hands on her, throwing mashed potatoes and chicken in her face, um, and all this other mess that she's done to her. And I remember when Natori Notton was talking about it, um, I believe on TV One, Keely got upset. And was saying that Notori needs to let it go, that it's not true. I mean, she came out from whatever rock she was hiding under to go off on social media. Let me go ahead and play y'all a flashback real quick. Check this out. There were a lot of adults that were influencing us. They wanted to control, uh, you know, what we were going to become and what kind of music. And it was just so much about making us successful that they forgot to let us be successful. Like, we had a platinum selling album. What is wrong? It became, Naturi's voice is too soulful. You're not crossover enough. Naturi, your look is not hot right now. Nobody's checking for a dark-skinned girl. Why would we put you in front? Everything that was working, it had reversed. I was a girl from Jersey. I'm a brown skinned sister who was out here being true to who I was, and they wanted to change the image. So the second album was when everything changed. Second album with 3LW, I wasn't allowed to sing lead as much anymore. I was told that my sound was not commercial or sellable or crossover. And I think when people get successful, they literally lose their minds, some people. So unfortunately, the managers of that group became very strategic about what kind of group we were gonna be. Instead of letting the fans choose, like they liked 3 w the way we were.
When things started going to the left with 3LW, yes, he told us that they were treating, mistreating her. One of the lowest points of being in the group 3LW for me was the day when we officially broke up and I left the road. We had this huge fight, which I'm sure many of my fans that remember, because I was on 106 in Park talking about, people started talking about, oh, there was a two-piece chicken. She threw chicken in her face. It wasn't just about the chicken, but that did really happen. For the record, a lot of people ask me, did y'all really have a fight at KFC? Yes, we did. There was a driver sitting in our Suburban the manager, who was also one of the girl's mother, sitting in the front. Keely and Adrian are sitting in the middle aisle, and I was in the back by myself. I said, I'm not the one who's trying to kick me out the group. Don't be mad that Wendy Williams or that the news is out, because it's true. And there were some names called, some profanities thrown. She turned around, Keely, and threw the plate of food, mashed potatoes, chicken, whatever else was in there, in my face. And I got out the car and I was just like, I'm going home. I was not given a gift to sing to deal with this excuse my language, but real talk, this is not what I'm supposed to be doing. If you all don't see me, and if you all don't appreciate me, someone else will. They drove off with that driver and left me in the parking lot in Atlanta, Georgia. I told her to take the first flight home and forget about the group because no one is supposed to be treated in that fashion. I got on a plane and came home. So I'm over here being a mom, literally bothering no one. And I hear Terry Naughton tells all what really happened at KFC. Okay, I let that shit go. It's probably like a grabby little splashy sound bite, right? Roll your eyes, move on. But then I hear that not only did I pie her in the face with chicken and mashed potatoes, we left her on the side of the road. First of all, no, we didn't. And second of all, why? Why would you need to make up new lies? Were the old ones not working anymore? I just, I don't see the point. I'm not in the entertainment industry anymore. I'm a mom. I'm over here. You are on a hit television show. Why do you need this? All right, so you guys just heard what Notori had to say, and then you guys just saw Keely's response. So it's very interesting how Keely, when it comes to her shit, you know what I'm saying, her putting hands on women and throwing food in women's faces, that was a long time ago. It didn't happen. Why is it being brought up? But she has no problem bringing up somebody else's old dirt. I'm going to need Keely and her train station cooch to go sit down somewhere. Ma'am, sit your all aboard have an ass down somewhere. The train has left the station. We are over you. We are over you and we've been over you since 3LW, okay? Thanks. So now this is my opinion about all of this mess, okay? I think at the end of the day, Chris is fed up. He's had it up to here. He's mad about people not leaving the past in the past. I could respect it if the only victim that Chris has had was Rihanna. I get what he's saying. He was 17. He was young. You know, it happened. It's been so long ago. I could, I get that totally. But again, it's not for me to forgive him. It's for Rihanna. And Rihanna has seemed to have forgiven him and moved on. My issue is, remember, not even about five years ago, he had issues with Karuchi. He put hands on Karuchi, threatened to kill Karuchi. She had a restraining order against Chris. And this was while Chris was grown. So that's the issue that I have with that. He keeps bringing up this Rihanna situation. If nothing had happened since 2009 or 10 when all that stuff went down, then I would say automatically, yes, give him grace. It's old, you know, whatever. But he's had other issues since then. You notice he never brings up the whole Karuchi drama. You know, he's had other issues since then. And I think that's what bothers some people. And it's not my place to tell people not to be bothered by someone who's been accused multiple times of domestic violence. You know, it triggers some people and I get that. But I also feel like a lot of people do use Chris Brown as a scapegoat or the face of domestic violence in the industry. 
And truth be told, a lot of these dust buckets put their hands on their women and put hands on these girls, and they're willing to put up with it because they want that lifestyle. They want a new bag. They want shoes. They want the the attention and the fame of being next to this rapper or R&B singer or actor. So a lot of women deal with this type of nonsense in silence, and they're willing to swallow it because... You know, they have a particular lifestyle that they want to maintain. And I think that's the saddest part in all of this. Krishan is definitely one of those women. You know, she's wanting to put up with getting hands put on her. So that way she can stay in the limelight with Blueface, which is a shame. But Chris is definitely 100% right. Um, You know, his past and his domestic violence situations aside, there's a lot of hypocrisy. Because the same people constantly writing on Chris Brown and bringing up his past and throwing it up in his face are the same ones who love of this whole Krishan and Blueface train wreck. These are the same people who don't have the same energy for any of these white abusers, okay? You know, so there's definitely a racial aspect where he gets a lot of it, where he's not allowed to grow and move on um, compared to other people. But then I also have to be honest, that Karuchi thing might still lay fresh in people's minds that at one point you were also abusing Karuchi. She came out, she spoke about it, she shared her story. So I think Chris is in a, you know, he's between a rock and a hard place. But at this point, you know, he's he's tired of it. He snapped, he went off. And I think he has every right to snap. I'm not mad at him for calling out the hypocrisy. I'm not mad at him for being upset. Um... Is it, you know, kind of shady for him to throw Krishan and Blueface under the bus? I can see Blueface's point. You know, I, I definitely get that. But Blueface and Krishan put themselves out there to be the 2023 version of Bobby and Whitney. To be super toxic, always high, always drunk, putting hands on each other. It's a mess. And, and also Blueface's mom needs to just, she needs to stay out of it. At this point, let Blueface, who's a grown man, and Chris Brown, who's a grown man, let them handle their own their own situation. She didn't need to jump in on it. Like the whole the whole family, his whole family is just seeking attention. Everybody in that camp is seeking attention, and it's annoying. But yeah, this entire situation is a hot mess, honey. Um, yeah, Chloe, you done opened up a can of worms, sis, okay? You done collaborated with Chris Brown, and we got all this drama and extra tea, and I'm here for it. Now, I'm sure they're going to move forward with the collaboration and drop the song. You know, a lot of people complaining and talking shit. Trust and believe when the song drops on the 24th, you know, the hypocritical internet. People will, you know, stream it, download it, listen to it, and it will chart on the billboards, and it'll be back to business as usual. So to me, a lot of this shit is just fake outrage. Let's be mad about something. You know, it's Friday. We're bored. Let's all drag Chris Brown and, you know, bring up his old domestic violence situations and stuff like that. I think a lot of it is just theatrics and people looking for attention. Now they've definitely gotten Chris Brown's attention, and whatever they choose to do with that attention is on them. So with that being said, you guys, this drama is crazy. I'll leave the question up to y'all. Let me know your thoughts on this entire messy situation, honey, concerning Chloe Bailey, Chris Brown, doing a sign together. We can't forget Keely, chugga, 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 choo, choo, Williams. You know what I'm saying? And what she had to say, her commentary, her opinion. Let me know what y'all think about that. And then, you know, later on this afternoon, we got Blueface and the mama, honey, with Krishan in the background laughing. Let me know what y'all think about that as well. This entire situation is a hot damn mess. It's going to be very interesting to see what happens next. So go ahead, leave a comment down below. Don't forget to like the video. Feel free to share it. Make sure you still subscribe to the channel. And I'll talk to y'all later. Have a good day. Deuces. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity, so sell your friends and your family. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the Lovely Tea TV Show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.